Okay, first question, like I said, it's, it's going to be about gold, of course. Um, bottom line, uh, this is John, John in Arkansas. Bottom line, Jim, you say you should be buying gold now. Keith, your process says don't buy gold now. <laughs> can you come to a consensus that the investor can understand? Now, I'll hit that first because I'm the one who's you know, going to stir that, that nest a little bit. You know, to be clear, you know, I sold gold and I am short, sold GLD, paper gold, you know, own my physical gold. Never sold that, never will. Um, right. And shorted GLD over the course of the one quad when you get a rate of change breakout in interest rates, cyclical one. You know, I shorted gold, and I'm most likely, if, 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 I'm, if I'm right, you know, I'm wrong a lot too, if uh, it's going to be like a six month thing. And then I'm going to buy the living shit out of gold. So if you want to yep. uh, me, get me to, a, it's not to getting a consensus. That's what I'm doing. And that's what I've always done. And it, I don't yep. apologize for it, but that's. I think when people, um, I think part of this, Jim, part of the question too, is that people really have belief systems, and it's really hard to overlay a risk management system like mine that's data driven with a belief system because they they need to or or want to believe just one thing. Do you think that's fair? Uh, first of all, I think it's fair. Secondly, I, I agree with what you described, Keith, in terms of a horizon. Now, I'm not uh, a trader; I'm an investor. Uh, I don't have. I don't do paper gold. And look, if you just want price exposure and you're, you want to get in or out in your hedge fund, I, I get calls from hedge funds. I can't mention names, but um, let's just say that uh, if, I did, if I did mention the name, you go, oh, yeah, that guy got it. Um, so they talk to me, and uh, but they do trade paper gold by and large. And it's yeah. it's a position you can get in and out, leveraged. I get it. Uh, so and that's fine. I mean, that's that's what a lot of people do and a lot of what, what your uh, your clients do. Um, but uh, I you know, but I'm in physical gold, the bid offer spreads are uh, actually large when you count commission, but commission is really, uh, physical gold scares, by the way. You go out and buy some physical gold, you'll be surprised how much <laughs> higher it is yeah. compared to paper gold. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, oh, they're ripping me off in commission. Well, not really. It is commission, but that's actually the bid offer. It's kind of all in pricing. It's one way to think about it. Uh, but, but here's the thing. Um, I'm not, uh, I don't consider myself a technician, but I do look at charts and I, I to me, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I think technical analysis has low predictive value, uh, all things equal, but if enough people believe it, it becomes true whether it makes sense or not. So yep. I, I do look at charts. And uh, so the drivers of gold are, first of all, you know, fair trade, geopolitical factors, that's one. Uh, good old supply and demand still counts, that's two. And the third one is interest rates. Well, the first two are supporting gold. Um, and geopolitical, we're not in any wars or hot spots, but it's just kind of there, certainly with regard to Iran and some other places. Um, and the uh, supply demand is, is all in favor of supporting gold prices because supply has been flat for like five years, about uh, about 3,200 metric tons per year, but it's not going up. And, and um, I am, I'm invested in some gold mines and uh, I can tell you from, you know, I've been 700 feet underground, uh, uh, it, it, it's hard to find. Um, but um, but the thing that's crushing gold are interest rates. So what's going on with interest rates? By the way, I spent a long time trashing efficient market hypothesis, and I keep doing it, and I will keep doing it because it's <laughs> junk science, but they teach it. I mean, they teach yep. people this junk, and so you got to deal with it. Uh, so, the, so here's the notion. The notion is markets look, you know, six months forward, uh, they, they they see what's coming, they apply a discount factor, they discount it back to the present value, and markets efficiently and smoothly incorporate all the information and reflect where things are going to be in six months, and you can't beat the market, so don't even try. That's efficient market hypothesis in a nutshell. Uh, well, markets do look forward, and they always get it wrong. They always get it wrong. They did not see the dot-com crash coming. They did not see the 2008 financial crisis coming. They did not see the pandemic. I did. talked about it in my last book. They did not see the 2020 crash. Markets always get it wrong. Now, that doesn't mean fight the market, because that's a good way to lose money. But don't stop thinking of markets as uh, they discount a they discount the wrong future. That's that's probably the best way to describe it. So what are markets saying right now? Well, they're saying, um, OK, here come the two thousand dollar checks. And that's correct. So there's going to be another two trillion dollars of deficit spending in the next few months. People are going to get two thousand dollar checks. Uh, and they're going to take those checks and run right out and buy a new car, refrigerator, you know, carpet the house, whatever. This is going to drive consumption. This is going to drive the economy higher. It's probably a little bit inflationary and interest rates have to go up. And they are going up. 10 year no yield to maturity has gone from like 90 basis points to I think it's about 110, 120. 
15 basis points today. So, and that's bad for gold because gold has no yield. Oh, gee, 10 year notes are going up in yield. So give me the 10 year notes because I'll take the higher yield. Got it. Um, there's one problem with that, which is that interest rates, they might go up a little higher. I wouldn't rule that out. And then they're not going to get slammed. They're going to go straight down. This has happened. Just look at a, a 10 year chart of yield maturity on 10 year notes. This happened like four times. Mm -hmm. And by the way, every peak is lower than the one before. Yeah. It used to be, I got to two and a half, crushed got to two and a quarter crushed. Now, I don't know, you know, one and a half, whatever, pick a number, it's going to get crushed again. Why? Go back to what we said earlier. You're locking right now, today, you're locking down half the economy. The pandemic is worse than ever. The vaccine distribution has been bungled. The White House, Trump picked a three-star general to run the logistics. This guy's a genius. He got the, they got the doses. They, the, well, the, pharma, the pharmaceutical companies created the vaccine. They got the dosage made produced they paid for everything they shipped it everyone's christmas cards were laid everyone's like, why are my christmas cards late <laughs> this guy took over the postal service to get the vaccine out there so they got to the point of delivery but that's where it broke down um so it's to the point this stuff's got to be 100 below zero to to preserve so when you get it you defrost it bring it to room temperature it's like a quart of milk if you don't use it in two days it goes bad uh, and that's what's happening new york is actually throwing away the vaccine because it's gone bad, because they couldn't get it injected fast enough. Why? Because, uh, oh, obviously, who should you inject? Well, over 65 with comorbidities, asthma, diabetes, et cetera, and health, frontline healthcare workers. Give it to them first. That's easy. Not what they did. Like, well, uh, maybe this neighborhood uh, got disadvantaged 40 years ago, so maybe we ought to give them a little vaccine. Fine. That's a real good way to waste your dosages and not get it done. Leaving aside the fact that this English strain, so-called, or South African strain, it's more contagious. It's a mutation. It's more contagious. We don't, and that means fatalities go up. Everyone's like the fatality rate is not going up. Screw the rate. The number of deaths is going up. The absolute number of fatalities goes up along with the caseload, whether the percentage rate changes or not. Who cares? People are dying. Um, and is there something, something called mutation escape? I had to kind of become an epidemiologist, virologist to write my book. Uh, mutation escape is when the virus mutates around the antibodies. Mm -hmm. So here, here's the virus, the antibodies with mutate goes up. Oh, here we go. I'm in the backfield because uh, I'm a new kind of virus. That happens. It's happened frequently. Some viruses, uh, some mutations are harmless. Some are do exactly what I just described. Um, so for all those reasons, best case, the vaccine's not going to have an impact until late 2021. Worst case, we're, we're back in this thing worse than ever. So, okay, take everything I just said. That's going to slam the economy. One other thing is going to slam the economy, higher interest rates. So the interest rates are going to, so right now, interest rates are going up. Gold price is going down. It finds support around uh, 1775 for the fundamental reasons I mentioned. It finds resistance at around 1950, you know, $1,950 per ounce because interest rates are going up. It's been kind of trading in a range in the 1800s or whatever. Uh, and that's where it sits. What, what is it going to take for gold prices to break out of the high end of the range, go past $2,000 and keep going? What's well, going to take a sharp decline in interest rates? Mm -hmm. But since the market's inefficient, not efficient, you're going to have to see the data. It's starting to show up, by the way. Initial claims uh, today were surprisingly high. Uh, unemployment, uh, uh, sorry, uh, job creation went down. We lost jobs in December. Um, those are early warning signs of what I just described, which is a, a second recession in the first quarter of 2021. It'll take Wall Street, you know, another three or four months, kind of what time horizon you were describing, to wake up to the reality. But when they do, interest rates are going to come down, um, the stock market's going to come down, and gold's going to go up. But that's probably three to six months away. So I, I, I don't disagree with your forecast and your trading strategy, even though I take a more long-term view of it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, you know, to each their own strategy. I think I think like you said before, you like to read books about things that you don't agree with, or you like like everyone has a different investment time horizon. They have a different characteristic characterization of of holdings or or asset allocations. However, they've thought about it, and it's just like get over yourself. Just do what you do and try to understand what other people do and empathize with that, and you might actually come up with some good ideas on how to do what you do better.